players. Uh, it's, it's really shouldn't be that way. It's, it's tragic, but it's true. It's true. They want to imitate. And there are some young people who have been down that road and back and found out there wasn't nothing there. And uh, many of y'all know uh, Todd Bennett uh, is a member of our church. And Todd raced motorcycles professionally at 17, 18 years old. And uh, you, many of you have heard his testimony. And you've heard that, uh, how God changed his life. I don't know if you've ever watched any of the Supercross races or anything, but he raced with a fellow in there named Jeremy McGrath, who now makes about a million dollars uh, ever so often. And he's, that's a lot of money to offer an 18-, 19-year-old kid. A lot of money. And it'd take a lot to cause a person to change like that. And Todd was just on the verge of, uh, of uh, making it. He was riding in the top ten in America. And so we thought it'd be good if Todd brought his motorcycle in here tonight. Uh, you say, I ain't never seen nothing like that in church. I ain't neither. But I told you, I told you last night, uh, I'd like to see him just bring his motorcycle in. This is what he used to do full-time, quit school to do it. And uh, I think we'll have Todd come in and show the kids just a little demonstration of what he did. And then we're going to sit down now, sit down. You'll see him, don't worry. You'll see him. All right, bring him on. Tell, this is Todd Bennett. Don't nobody stand up. Nobody move. Nobody move. This is Todd Bennett. This is what he used to do all the time till God got a hold of his heart. <laughs> You can be seated. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> All right, now listen. <laughs> hey, there's a bunch of them boys in our church. A bunch of them boys in our church, they do that. That's what they do on Saturdays. And you know what? Listen, listen, kids. Listen, young people. Todd goes out on the bus route every Saturday morning and brings kids to church. Bring kids to church every Saturday morning. Bring it. Calm down now. You're all right. <laughs> if we'd had room in here, he could have done a big one. They could just about jump this tent. I'm serious. He just, what you, gear was you in? He's only in second gear. Them babies will get it, I'm telling you. I rode the smaller one he had, and I think it'll jump out from under you. They'll leave a Mustang sitting just like that on takeoff. Of course, that ain't hard to do, but you know. Uh, you know, just kidding. Just kidding. Now, I want Todd to just tell you, he could have been a millionaire maybe tonight, but he chose to live his life for the Lord instead. Went and worked a, went and worked a third shift job and goes everywhere our youth choir goes and sings and gives testimonies. And uh, as you can see, he's got a lot of talent to be able to do that. And that's a short jump, believe me. I'm serious, they, they could clear this thing almost. And uh, I want him to just give a word of testimony, and then the kids are going to sing. We have a, a Nissan sitting right out there in front of a bus that needs to be moved, JPE 3248. Well, I thank you, Lord, for saving me. You know, I remember, I remember looking back. Uh, I was thinking about it today. I was looking back through the, you know, uh, when I grew up, I grew up... Uh, just in love with motorcycles, you know, and I spent, that's all I spent my time doing, you know, and I got, if, if they, if my mom and dad got, if I got in trouble, I got grounded from riding a motorcycle, that, you know, that was my punishment, and you know, that's all I lived for, and, and, and I took all my time, you know, and most of y'all probably know my testimony, you've heard it, and most of y'all people have heard my testimony, how, how all I did was, you know, that was my, my life, that was my God, seven days a week, you know, and, 
And the only time I prayed to the Lord was to you, to, to, for Him to keep me safe. And, and uh, I never used it for Him. And I got saved when I was little, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't use it for Him, you know. And, and He let me go, you know. And He let me do my thing. And, and uh, you know, I remember if, if, I, if, if three or four years ago I'd come in here, or, or five years ago, I'd had, I'd had earrings in my ear and, and uh, cocky, and I'd have thought I was something, you know. And, but you know what? You know what? I'll tell you what, I didn't jump that jump to uh, impress y'all. I've, I've raced in front of uh, 50,000 people. I just want, I want to get some of y'all little boys' attention. And, and some of you kids, you know, that, that go out there and, and uh, y'all want to, you want to go to church, but you want to, you know, my problem was I went to church when I was little, but when I started racing motorcycles, I had to be at the racetrack on Sunday. And, and uh, some of you little kids that miss Wednesday night service for ball games and stuff like that, you know what? You know, that's, it starts out like that, you know, and, and my mom and dad had good intentions, and, they, and you know, they loved me, and they, they, they'd do anything for me, you know, and they, and they didn't realize, you know, they didn't think it really rob us from spiritually, but, you know, it robbed me spiritually, and I never did get to, I didn't, I didn't go, you know, to church, and I didn't get right with God, and I lived wicked, and I, you know, I went out and hung out with my friends and cussed and carried on, you know, and, and I'd walk around like I was something. And, and you know, I, and the Bible says pride goes before destruction, you know, and, and I'm surprised the Lord, I don't know why he didn't. He just had grace on me, but he should have destroyed me, you know, and he should have, I should be in a wheelchair right now. And you know what? A lot of, some of them guys I race against, they're in wheelchairs right now, and that's where I should be. And, and the only reason, I don't know why God did it. He just had mercy on me, and I thank him for it. And you kids, you, all you kids, listen, I'm telling you, you ought to get in church and stay in church. You know, you know I, I don't even ride. I, I ride maybe once a month now. I used to ride five days a week and then normally race twice on the weekends. And, you know, that's all I ever did. That's, that was my time, you know. And I got the talent. I got, you know, I, I could go right now. I, I'm, I could go right now and train and race next year's Supercross and finish top ten against the best riders in America. But you know what? I'm not going to sell out to the devil. You know, and I'm not going to let him. You know, I had to advertise for beer. You know, I had to advertise for beer and and cigarettes. You know, I'm not going to sell out to the devil. I'm going to use it for him. And you know what? I might not be famous here, and I might not have my name up, up on the on the big stuff. But I tell you what, I'm going to live for him, and I'm going to serve him. And I thank you. I thank all you people that prayed for me tonight. And I thank you. And I know a lot of y'all prayed for me tonight that we'd do this and it'd be safe. And I just want to do it for him and, 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 and use it for him and get some of you little boys' attention, you know, that got them dreams. You know, I had them dreams. When I was coming up, I remember them dreams I had. And you know, that's, that, you know them dreams are all right. But if you let that get in the way of serving God, you're going to pay one day, you know, and I... And, and I have paid for my sins. I've had broke legs. I laid in the hospital. My mom and dad can tell you, I laid in the hospital six weeks in traction. Couldn't even get out of bed to do nothing. I took everything I did was in the bed for six weeks for racing and breaking my leg. And, and I paid for some sins. At 12 years old, I was wicked and cussed and, and lived like a devil. And I paid for some sins on down the road. And you know what? That's the way the, that's the, way the devil, he'll make you think, you know, you got all this. And, you're, and, and he'll, he'll show you something. But you know what? You'll pay for your sins. And, and, and the best thing you could ever do is lead people to the Lord and witness. And hey, hey, I, I quit. You know, I give up that fame to go out on bus ride. I go out on bus ride every Saturday morning. And I didn't go this Saturday morning. I wanted to get all this stuff ready. But I normally go every Saturday morning. I go out to these little kids that don't even know who I am, could care less. But they care. They, you know, that makes them feel good when I come by and I just go by and see them. And I encourage some of you young people, you ought to go on bus route. You ought to, you ought to pull them kids in. And if you don't have a bus route at your church, you ought to go out and hand out tracts and say, you ought to come to church and you ought to get saved. And you know, I encourage y'all, you ought to do something for the Lord because one day it's all going to be gone. And, and what's, what's it worth? You know what? If you, do, if you are famous, you know, you're going to be forgotten in a couple of years, but you got to live in eternity one place or the other, and you better choose now what you're going to do. And I thank the Lord for saving me, and I thank Him for all He's done. Amen. Amen. Now, top man, now top, he'll be back in a minute when he changes clothes, get up here and sing. And I want to tell you something, young people. Today's my spiritual birthday. Man, I'm telling you a while ago, you say, well, preacher, where can you get young people like that? The power of God came down at youth camp. That's where he come from. The power of God. First time he come to our church, he had an earring. 
God moved in at youth camp. And you, got, you know what you do with them kind? They got to be dynamited out. A little youth outing with a hot dog and a skating party ain't going to get that kind. It takes a miracle power of God Almighty. And I tell these kids all the time, your friends might let you down, forsake you, but the Lord, he'll stand by you. I want to sing, I'm just a pilgrim. I know my spiritual birthday today. I'm happy in the Lord. I'm glad it's youth rally time. Good to be saved, ain't it? Sing it.
praise here for a minute? Amen. How many of you had a birthday in the month of April? Stand up. Your physical birthday. Stand up. Isn't that something? Look at all these that were born. All right. How many of you were born again in the month of April? I was. Amen. 25 years ago tonight, I came in Nebo Baptist Church. Lost without God. My hair was down here. I had my old rock tapes out there in my car. Boy, if I don't shut up, we ain't never gonna get saved. Lord, have mercy. I never knew. I had no idea what the Lord was and what he'd do for you. But this song, this song sums it up. I believe it will for you too. Amen. Thank God I'm free from this whole sinful world. I want to tell you something tonight. My hope is in the blood.
at youth camp. All of y'all just stand up and sing it. Verse of man in the middle. Stand up and sing it right now. All you young people from all these churches that sing. Come on. all of you. Girl just got saved right here. Amen. Sing it out, girls. Let me hear you.
we're going to give these chains. They're still praying up here tonight. I want to sing that song. I just want to thank you, Lord. They sung last night. You know, you kids know that most young people in the world have never, ever been in nothing like this in their life. Never been in nothing like this. If they had been, they wouldn't be following that crowd they're following. Just thank him tonight. Just thank him. Amen. For making the sun shine. Another one got saved over here. Amen. Putting the stars in the sky for flowers that bloom. He's good to us. So still coming. That's all right. This is what we're here for. Don't you get that old bad spirit in you. You better let the Lord have his way.
understood he was guilty of loving me. sing now. These are still coming. Greatest thing you can ever do is go hug your mama's neck and say everything's all right. Greatest thing you can Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Well, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? This girl right here just got saved. Amen. Glory to God. get in. Now's a good time to get in. Good time to get in. Some of you here tonight from right around here in Marion used to live right, used to serve God, and you got hurt, the devil tricked you, maybe had the problems, and you got out. Be a good time for you to get back in there and rededicate your life. You've been dragging your feet spiritually. Be a good night for you to just get back in there and say, all right, I'm ready to get right with God. 
It's unusual what's happening in here this evening. This is why we have a youth camp. This is just like a great big youth camp. My, my, my. What a blessing. You know what? You're in trouble. You're in trouble when a service like this no longer moves you. I don't ever want to get to a place where it don't touch me. It better touch you. You better let it touch you. You know what will make your heart hard? Sin. Sin will make your heart hard. You better get rid of it. You better get rid of it. It'll harden your heart. Amen. So I'm still coming, praying. Hallelujah. shall wax worse and worse. And I want to say before I read the rest of that verse, there's nothing in the Bible about the Bible saying that the world's going to get better before Jesus comes back. You got a lot of people telling, oh, it's coming, it's coming, this great mighty worldwide. Uh, that ain't what the book says. That ain't what it says. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Several years ago around New York City, they come out with a new perfume for ladies. And this has been, well, it's been about nearly 20 years, and they had a little bottle about that big, just a half an ounce or an ounce or something, sold it for a, a very, very high price, extreme amount of money. And the ladies were all bragging on it. They put it in a big Mad Madison Avenue pitch and put it in magazines and on TV and said, hey, this is the fragrance of the, of the year and that sort of thing. And one rich lady told her friend, another rich lady told her friend, another rich lady told her friend, they all went and bought it. Bare, barely had just a fresh little cool mist. Really didn't have much of a fragrance. Matter of fact, they got to looking at it and they found out that when they looked at it, it wasn't a thing in the world but pure, fresh mineral water. And they had packaged, packaged it into a nice little bottle and they put it in a nice little container and put it in fancy stores and give it some exotic romantic name like Evening and Marion or something like that. <laughs> and they sold a hound out of that stuff. And that led somebody to believe that we are living in what we call the day of deception. We're living in the day of deception. Never before have so many people been deceived by the devil as they are tonight. If you're sitting here tonight in your right mind with a King James Bible in your lap and your name in the book of life, you ought to be shouting all over this place tonight. Yeah. Buddy, I'm telling you, the majority of this world is deceived. Yeah. By far, the big majority of the world has been deceived. All right, get your seat there. Everybody stay real still now. Just a few minutes. Nobody move. You think the devil ain't deceiving people? Give you a few little incidents of what's going on right now. A Labrador retriever named Sadie recently was ordained as a minister by the church in San Rafael, California. The $15 fee included an official certificate of ordination. Deceived by the devil. The pastor of a Unitarian church in Texas recently had an exotic dancer to take part in a Sunday worship service. 200 adults and children watched as the dancer stripped in front of the congregation to music. Human art and worship, they'll call it. While at the same time, the Department of Conservation received $180,000 in grants to study owl vomit. A program in the massive federal farm bill requested $19 million to study the effects of cows belching on global warning, warming. 
You think I'm kidding, don't you? One mother and father returned from their home weekend trip recently and found their teenage daughter hanging from a basement pipe, still dressed in her prom gown and wearing a wilted corsage. She had a little note there. Why the blank didn't you pick me up? Deceived by the devil. One university offers, University of Iowa, University of Arizona, Tucson, has a course called Garbology 101. Garbology, garbage. This is a class on how to stack garbage and actually meets at the city dump. You know, I don't know about you, but are they doing this in your state? They've probably been doing this up north for years. They just started around here where you can't even take your trash to the trash no more. That ain't about the... You, you know, they want you to go through it and sort it all out and put cups over here and papers over here and all that. I took trash to trash dump. They won't even let us dump it. What do they expect us to do with our trash? We ought to all just start dumping it out there in the middle of the street somewhere and they'd change them stupid laws like that. That didn't get much of an amen, but some of you brainwashed. Trash is trash. Trash ought to just be burnt or covered up or something. Deceived by the devil. One study offered a university uh, uh, degree and course on, am I really what the soap operas tell me I am? Unable to get a babysitter so she could go to a party, a teenage mother dumped her 39-day-old daughter down the chute of a trash incinerator in Chicago apartment rather than miss the party. The Bible said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. An eight-year-old boy in Chicago pulled a pistol out of his lunchbox and shot an eight-year-old girl in the back at school during reading class. When one five-year-old refused to steal candy for two other juveniles, age 10 and 11, he was dropped to his death from the 14th story window of a Chicago high-rise building. After beating his mother to death with a dozen blows from a baseball bat, 15-year-old Richmond, Texas youth commented in his trial, I was just playing a little baseball with my mother. But listen to this. The law is not even able to do what they need to do a lot of times. 25-year-old man was accused of sexually molesting his girlfriend's daughter and only got three years of probation. The judge in Wisconsin ruled that the five-year-old was unusually sexually promiscuous and that the molester was unable to fiend off the girl's advances. Five years old! And the lawyer convinced the judge that that little girl came on to that pervert. You think we're not living in an age of deception? You think we're not living in a day when the power of the devil is stronger than it's ever been to blind you kids and keep you from God? You not realize the devil's imps are working 24 hours a day to, to drop you and destroy your life? Kids, he's working. While participating in a national conference of a family ju court judges discussing the meeting epidemic of child abuse, an Alabama judge was arrested and charged with molesting the 13-year-old grandson of a fellow judge in attendance. The following article appeared in the Boston Globe newspaper. GWM, that's gay, white, male, 35, quiet, romantic, sensitive, honest, looking for a relationship based on old-fashioned morals in the paper. In the paper. 
after bringing two children into the world, one married couple finally decided to reverse roles and gender and had sex change operations. The five foot four inch wife, Jean, became the hubby, while Harry, the six eight husband, was transformed into the new wife, Sheila. Right. Now listen, these are people that are on our talk shows daily and the world thinks it's okay. They think a crowd like this in here is crazy tonight. I'm telling you, there's two different sides in this world. There is very clearly two different sides. The kids, hold it unless you are about to bust. Hold it. There are two different sides. One side says anything goes. The other side says we're going to go by what that book says. The devil is deceiving many young people. People don't get the news, although Dan Rather and Connie Chung informed us about the earthquake that devastated Los Angeles on January 27, 1994. They were too chicken to tell their viewers the rest of the story. And that was that the quake's epicenter struck in the midst of three communities in Los Angeles, Chatsworth, Northridge, and Canuga Park. Would anybody in America think it's just coincidence? that that's where the center of the earthquake was and that there's 1,400 pornographic videos made in America every year and 95% of them are made in that one spot. And people think that's just an accident and some kind of weird freak act of nature. I don't know about you, but I, I get sick and tired of hearing people say, well, if Mother Nature's good to us, and if, if Mother Nature decides to do this, it's not Mother Nature, it's God. It's God. It's on the throne. The day of deception. Now, young people, listen to me quickly this evening. The devil deceived Adam and Eve. As a matter of fact, the Bible said Eve, the woman was in the transgression and Adam went into it with his eyes open. The devil deceived Cain and caused him to slay his brother Abel. The devil deceived Samson and David and Saul and Noah and just about every human being that's on this earth. The devil laughs while your life is destroyed. The devil makes you think the most important thing in the world is being accepted by your friends at school and whether or not they're gonna like you. That's the devil's way of deceiving you kids. All you teenagers, look at me. I'm not going to preach long, so I want you to look at me now. You look at me real seriously. They, they made a survey some time ago. They surveyed a bunch of 13 years old. They said, what is the most important thing in the world to you? The 13-year-olds replied, the most important thing in the world to them is their opinion that their friends have of them. That is the most important thing in the world to a 13-year-old average. That's scary, people. That's tragic. But what are we going to think about as the devil deceives our generation of young people? You see, the devil deceives teenagers by making you think that just because you got your driver's license that you can just hot rod around and drive anyway and play with a car like it's a toy. The devil deceives, especially young men. You know, when young boys get their license, they want to be, they want to be a race car driver. I know you teenage boys, you just like me. I mean, you want to get up there and buddy, I want to see how fast I can go, how close I can go. What makes a teenage boy do that? Why is it that the devil controls your mind? That makes you think, listen boys, I want to just tell you this, this this evening. An automobile ain't no toy. They tell me that if you could run an automobile through here tonight, an average size car at, at 100 miles an hour, and this 100 miles an hour car shot through this tent that that car when it passed this pulpit would weigh 27 pounds and that means if I could stand right here when that car went by me at 100 miles an hour if I could time it right I could take my foot and kick it off the highway and you boys better remember when you get out there driving up and down the road in these cars 
and showing off and flying by and waving at people. That ain't nothing to mess around with, boys. The devil is deceiving you. Now, the girls, your problem is, you know, girls don't usually want to rawr and squall out and everything. The, the girls, I'd say this, but they're just dingy when they drive. They really are. It's true. Get up, walk out, bless God. I'm going to preach you the Bible whether you like it or not. I'm pre the book of Acts said we let her drive and she hit the rocks. And we had much work to come by the boat. Insurance going up. See, you girls, you don't get out and race, but I'm telling you, there is nothing scarier to me than a teenage girl driving a car. Hey, you want to go with me? Hey, let's go somewhere. tell you the truth whether you'll believe in it or not. I heard about that one teenage girl. One teenage girl was driving up the wrong side of the street. The cop stopped her. He said, ma'am, why are you on the wrong side of the road? She said, oh, officer, the other side's full of cars. That sounds like them. Girls, listen. Girls, I love you and you're sweet. You really are. We got a lot of young sweet girls in our church. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you what. One girl sat in a car wash for an hour because she thought it was raining too hard to drive on home. One of them, one teenage girl was stopped at a no parking lot and and the cop said, ma'am, I'm sorry you can't park here. And she said, I can, officer. He said, ma'am, I'm sorry you can't park here. She said, officer, right there's a sign. It says, fine for parking. <laughs> now listen. Hey, you don't believe me? This really happened. You don't believe I'm telling you the truth? This really happened last night. This actually happened last night. I'm not making this up. And the girl that said this might be here, and I don't want to hurt your feelings, honey. I don't even know who you are. But last night, there was some of them out there, them little porta johns out there, and one of these girls come out, and there was another, and she said, I don't know how to flush this thing. That's the truth. That's the truth. That is a truth before God. Oh, I see him pointing over there. Is that her? All right. Oh, I know what some of you people are saying. You say, oh, I know what some of you visitors are saying. Good night, y'all going to have to hush. I'm trying to preach. I know what some of you are saying. You're saying, I have never in my life seen a church. This is youth rally, man. We love it, don't we? We love it, man. We love it. You say, you believe all this stuff went on here is of God? No. Do you believe all that sleeping at your church is of God? Now listen. The devil deceives young people when he tells them, that it don't matter who you hang out with. The devil deceives young people when he says, kids, it don't matter. You can run with a bad crowd and yet stay in a good life. No, no, you can't. I have young people tell me all the time. They'll say, well, I just want to go around these people so I can witness to them. If you take a kid and drop it in a swimming pool, the pool does not become dry. The kid becomes wet. The kid don't change the pool. The pool changes the kid. You listen to me this evening, ladies and gentlemen. The devil will lie to you. This, you say, well, yeah, but I got all my friends. With friends like that, some of you kids, you don't need no enemies. You know what I tell these kids? You ask them. Ask any of them. I tell them all the time. I say, stick with the bunch. Stick with the bunch. Ain't that what I tell you? Stick with the bunch. Stick with the bunch. Everywhere the choir goes, you go. Everywhere they're all hanging around, you hang around. I'll tell you who the young people's going to mess up. It's the one that's always wanting to hang around out there outside and sit way over yonder and sneak off away from the crowd.
There's the one the devil's going to get right there. That's the one the devil's going to get. Everything your youth group does, be a part of it. Every place they go, go with them. You say, well, I can live just as right without them. Uh Uh-uh. You remember the banana? When it left the bunch, it got skinned. That's right. The devil skin your hide too, big boy. You're no match for him. You say, well, my friends, they're good to me. Yeah, I know how them friends are out there. Friends that offer you a beer, friends that offer you a joint, friends that offer you stuff. That's not your friend. They'll say, here, this will help you. Yeah. They're like that fellow I was telling the other day about these two fellows riding down the road on a motorcycle, and it was real cold, and it's ice cold, and it's freezing, and the one on the back, they stopped me. Turned his jacket around like this, you know, and zipped it up, zipped it up the back like that so he could stay a little bit warmer. And he got, they were flying down the road and had a wreck. And when they wrecked, the ambulance workers come and got one and they reported to the hospital. They said, you know something? That man driving that thing was dead on arrival. And I bet he said, they said, that second fellow's dead the time we got his head turned around, right? That's some people trying to help you. Now let me say this. The devil lies. Hear me. Hear me. I'm going to be quick now. Hear me. The devil lies to you young people when he tells you that rock music is all right and won't hurt you. I'll tell you what. You know what? There's a lot of somebody said, well, you can't have no young people in the church if you preach against everything they do. I ought to tell you what, brother, if we don't get to preach to them what's right, it ain't going to do no good to have them anyway. And I want to tell you, I've never changed my mind about it, and God ain't neither. Rock and roll music is out of hell itself. It's wicked, it's rotten, it's not clean, it'll pollute your mind, it'll mess up your heart, it'll cause you to compromise your morals. It's sin. It's wicked, it's wicked, it's wicked. You say, I like it. Some people like LSD. It makes no difference what you like. It's got a spirit in that stuff that will absolutely cause you to rebel. And I want to tell you, it's a devil deceiving young people make them think rock and roll's all right. And then let me say, the devil deceives young people into thinking their parents don't know what they're talking about. Let me tell you, I tell our kids this. I say, you better listen to your mother and daddy and you better obey your mother and daddy and you better honor your mother and your daddy. I want to say this. Some of you may not agree with it, but did you know something? Nine times out of ten, your parents, if they're lost, is still going to tell you to do what's right. Very seldom, even will a lost person tell a kid to do wrong. Very seldom. You better listen to that mama. You better listen to that daddy. You better not say, oh, my mother makes me sick. I just can't stand it. She just fusses at me all the time, and I just don't get to do nothing. And why don't you not? I'll tell you what you do, you little brat. Amen. You need... The dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life is this kids' rights stuff where it's, you you got to respect me, mother, and I've got to make my own decision, and my life is none of your business. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's abomination to God. That's why God gives you a mother and daddy. You don't like to hear this, but God gives you a mother and daddy because you ain't got enough sense to do what you're supposed to. You got a big body and a little brain, teenagers. That's your problem. It's a devil. It's a devil that deceives you. I want to say tonight, it's a devil that deceives young people into cheating them out of heaven. Well, I got to think about this. This evening, especially being my spiritual birthday and everything, I got to think, I thought, glory to God. Hey, man. I got to think about how the hope that we've got. I got to thinking about the young people tonight that I visited in the jails. A lot of these other preachers have jail ministries and stuff. You would not believe. We had a young man out here last night limping in. Some of you saw him, been drinking for weeks and weeks. 18 years old. Life in a wreck, miserable. Did you know tonight there are kids your age, there are kids your age that don't know where they're going to sleep tonight. They don't know where their next meal's coming from. Talking to you now. I'm talking to you. They right now, 
are hungry and cold and their boyfriend put them out and they had a big fight and somebody stole their dope and got their car and left them all their money. They're laying down on an old street in New York City or Chicago or Detroit somewhere and they're trying to get up under a bridge away from the cold and they're shivering like that tonight and then some of them will die. Listen to me, kids. Some of those teenagers will die tonight and go to hell. They'll die tonight and go to hell and they'll burn in hell forever and ever and ever. And then I got to thinking about you kids. And I got to thinking about me. And I got to thinking about us. Uh, kids, kids, y'all listen to me tonight. I, y'all are my favorite kids in the whole world. You are right here. And I love you. And I, God knows I'd fight in a second for all of you. And I, you're, you're the best. I think you're the greatest in the world. And everybody ought to feel that way about their young people. But it bothers me. It bothers me. It, it bothers me when I see so many of you take God's blessings for granted. And you just think, ah, it don't matter if I go to church or I don't go to church. And me and my girlfriend's going to go out riding around and we're going to be cool, you know. Oh, kids, listen, these teenagers your age beating their head on the floor right now because their body is shaking for another bit of drug. There are teenagers your age tonight that are in abortion clinics with their whole body wrapped with pain thinking I'm murdering my baby. Oh, God, what am I going to do? I've got AIDS. I'm going to die and then go to hell on top of that. Here are you kids sitting here tonight. I mean, you're probably in the greatest youth meeting in America right here tonight. And you're sitting here. Most of you, your names are in the book of life. You're going to heaven one of these days and live with Jesus. And there's a big old blistering burning hell down there and you're not going to burn. And while you've got everything in the world going for you and you ought to not take God's blessings for granted and let the devil cheat you, you ought to say glory to God. I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to serve him. I'm not going to let the devil cheat me out. I got to thinking, I got to thinking, when I walk in this tent, I hear my name 20 times. Brother Danny, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, Brother Danny. And I ain't, sometimes you might think I'm being rude or something, but there is no way in the world that I can talk to everybody. I see some of my good friends here and don't even get to talk to them this weekend. But this evening as I was studying and praying, I went home today and prayed a while and I got to thinking, you know what? One of these days, we're going to have a meeting. And buddy, I'm just going to sit there and I say, hey, I think I'll go over and see old Ryman. Sat around two or 3,000 years on gold streets, people. Gold streets, man. Oh, glory to God, brother. I don't know how far it is around this thing, but I'm about ready to take a lap. Amen. Solid gold streets. But he will sit down, take a big old piece of the uh, fruit off the tree of life, big as that piano, bury our head in that. You won't have to worry about fat grams or calories. You won't have to worry about what time it is. You won't have to worry about, hey, buddy, we're going to a meeting over there one of these days. Glory to God. Brother, we'll have all the time to fellowship, all the time to sing. We'll rejoice around the throne of God and worship him forever and ever. This thing's going to happen, man. It's going to happen. And this right here tonight is just a little taste of what it's going to be like when we get on the other side. I'll never forget the night I got saved. Heaven came down. Glory fill my soul. The devil cheats young people tonight and deceives them when he makes you think you've got plenty of time. I heard this story many years ago and I'm telling you this and I'm through. Young girl went to a tent revival one night just like this. They had the old-fashioned shavings and sawdust on the floor. She's about 16 years old. She got under conviction. That girl got under conviction that night, went home. She didn't go to the altar. Other people went. She stayed back. She said, Daddy, something's, something's talking to me. Something's bothering me. I feel like I need to get saved. Her daddy was a politician running for office in the county. And he said, all right, I want you to get that mess out of your head right now. He said, you know we're in politics in this county. I don't want it getting all over town. But our family's a bunch of religious fanatics. 
and I want this, I want this out of your head. It's not going to happen. She said, okay, Daddy. Whatever this is, just leave me alone. And it was the Holy Ghost. She said, God, just quit bothering me. A year went by. She was laying on her deathbed with a strange, weird disease that had destroyed her body. And the doctor stood over and said, there's nothing that I can do. Nothing. And the daddy said, you got to. It's my girl. Teenager. Teenagers do die, you know. They die every day. Some of them will die tonight. And she said, Daddy, I'm scared. And Daddy didn't know God and she didn't know God. She said, Daddy, I'm scared. I don't want to die. Daddy, no. Daddy, no, I don't want to die. And he said, Honey, I can't help you. And the doctor can't help you. And she began to breathe her last few breaths. She said, Daddy, my feet's burning. Daddy, I'm going in the fire. Daddy, Daddy, forgive me. Help me. I'm burning. I'm burning. And died, friend, she's burning. I'm trying to call on somebody to help her. She's in hell tonight. And her mind goes back to that night a million times by now. And she turned around and walked out of a tent meeting just like this. The devil deceived her. The devil deceived her. I said the devil deceived her. For heaven's sake, for your eternal soul's sake, don't let it happen to you. We've had a wonderful time tonight. We've had a little bit of everything. The greatest thing could happen here tonight would be for you to get out of your seat, wherever you're at, teenager, and walk down here to this altar and get saved. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Come on, come on right now, come on right now. Christian here tonight. You say, I'm going to get on fire for God. I'm not going to let the devil deceive me. Come on, move right now. Say, say, say. Turn it up, y'all. Say. Amen. That's right. Come on. Amen. Amen.